Sure. Re- recording. recording is on. And the recording wow. was very weird and janky. It came out kind of echoey and stuff. It was a little, a little strange. So, but there was a recording uh, last time from this. Uh, Pete, we're trying to troubleshoot why J- and Jitsi just changed how it does recordings. So that's different. So there we are. <clears throat> hey, Mark Antoine. Hey, uh, okay. you've made it. Uh, Flancia, Finally, I managed to shift my other meeting. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Uh, Flansen, do you have do you have audio back? Can't tell if you can't hear. Still working. It. Okay. <clears throat> um, that's strange. Is it not working? Yes. No. Huh. I think it never worked for him. Oh, okay. Um, Jack, nice to see you. Um, so I was just reporting in that I had a very nice kind of first call with Ida Josefina this morning of uh, the SANE project. And uh, we sort of told our stories about how we got to where we are. And and she's trying to create collective intelligence so that uh, extinction uh, events don't like extinguish humanity. And I'm like, oh, that's me too. <laughs> so very nice. And I, I passed her a link to this call if she has time to join. I don't know if she has. Uh, she's in the Betaworks cohort at the Think Camp right now in New York. Uh, and that that's apparently going really well as well. Yeah, so this extinction, extinction thing. And she mentioned X Risks, uh, which um, was not a book I'd sort of found yet. And uh, so um, very interesting stuff around that. And I now have officially way too many tabs open to harvest after all of our all of my calls are done today. <clears throat> but I just want to see how everybody else is and what you'd like to talk about in this call since our, our crowd is kind of mixing and, and, and mingling. Um, Chris, uh, uh, most, uh, Chris and Flancian, uh, Marc Antoine and Pete and Jack are regulars for the Free Jury's Brain call on Mondays. Um, and so I think these two groups are, are very overlapping in, in terms of intention and context and all that. So. <clears throat> happy, happy to see us cross pollinate. Um, and we'd love to know kind of what's on our minds. Um, I don't know if you saw the link I put on uh, Supermind Design. Just yeah. about a minute before I logged into this call. Okay. Uh, did I also put the YouTube link? No. Uh, yeah, I did as a reply to it. Sorry. Oh. Okay. Uh, what's the Supermind? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, this is somebody who comes from the MIT uh, Collective Intelligence Lab, and he has a site which he says is about augmented collective intelligence. So, and he's interested in how do we have uh, supermines. And interestingly, in the if you follow Supermind Design uh, link, you'll find in somewhere. Uh, this is Gianni Giacomelli. Yes. Yes, yes, I've got him in my brain. So keep going. Okay, there's a slash database gives you, he's got 800 examples of real life building blocks of collective intelligence. Let me put that this conversation. Uh, and he's got four or five axes of how he classifies collective intelligence building blocks, I guess. Uh, and so he's got his own classification scheme, which I think is part of what you were trying to do in this in this group. And uh, pretty rich, uh, pretty rich typology and uh, examples. So when I keep saying, God, we collective intelligence types need to assemble better. <laughs> Into perhaps a kind of, uh, what would you call it? A collective intelligence, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The irony is abound. Irony is abound. Um, so yeah, it's happening there too. I just, so that's what's on my mind these days. It's, uh, we have all these collective intelligence groups reinventing the wheel and we need to talk more. I love that. Afonso, can you hear us now? Yes, good, cool. I can, I think, yes, can you hear me? Do we hear you cool, five, yes. by, five by five, as they say in the radio yes. business? All right, glad to be here. And five by five means, Pete, you'll know this, right? Uh, I think it's, it was five on five if you got five words out of five. 
Oh, the, I thought it was like a rating of one to five on uh, quality and distortion. No, it's something like that. <clears throat> I knew it as it's, it's a, a number of words. Five by heard. five. I hear you loud and clear. Signal strength and readability report. Um, signal strength and clarity. clarity. Yeah, signal strength and signal clarity. Uh, exactly. So five by five means the signal is very strong and the, the transmission is very clear. <laughs> so there we are. As well. Um, kind of like, like an APGAR score. score. Yeah, yeah. An APGAR score for radio transmissions. Is it pink? Yeah, five by five is probably older. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, I, Mark Antoine, you look so familiar, and your name is familiar, and I'm guessing maybe Tinderbox? Pictures that could well be. Office. Pictures okay. at all the post offices. Okay. That could well be. All right. The first Tinderbox meeting? <laughs> the very first? The very first. That's the only one I was at. Seriously? Okay. Wow. <clears throat> what is Tinderbox, I have to ask? It's a uh, very, well, not that ancient, but 20 years, 25 years ago, tool for thinking. 2002. 2002? Okay, 20 years ago. Uh, it's an app, so it's not, it's not a web app. It's a Mac app. Uh, that's why it didn't get as popular as it could have been. But it's basically got a lot of what's making people excited about Tana today, which is prototypes aka super tags and agents aka live queries uh and plus very nice visual organization very uh so yeah curated and, and it's written one of the, the the big old um it's OG, large management systems. ogpkm yeah um yeah. i i think it's uh, if I remember correctly, it's also got uh, what I think is an interesting pricing model. Um, it's it's high priced, uh, kind of unapologetically, um, so it attracts new users slowly, um, but retains users over time, and uh, has the uh, development budget to be able to continue um, making it better and better. Based on meetups that I've seen in the last year or two, its user base is all academics over the age of 60 primarily um and part of that is because of when it started but it's you know it hasn't spread because it never went into the web world so who buys apps now i know and it's mark bernstein <clears throat> who, I met, who i met once years ago back in sort of that era and haven't haven't bumped into since then well, he, he was very active in the hypertext groups. Yes, and that's where he gets gets his name. Um, I invited him to do a lecture at uh, SRI once, and he came out. But you have, it, at least historically, it was Mac only. It's yeah, not it's so still it's, not on or like the, like like Devin Think, which was Mac like Devin Think. Like Devin Think. Uh, actually, go ahead. Sorry. I had I had uh, Tinderbox and Devon Think on one of those old white MacBooks, hmm. and uh, the hard disk crashed. And it didn't just crash. It I sent it to the guy that that uh, cleaned up the disks from 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 the 9/11 uh, 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 the, the towers. They got all he got a this guy in San Francisco got all the disks and. He wrote, he, he phoned me back and he said, there is nothing I can do with this disc. It is gone. So I had to buy a new disc and start it over. And I didn't buy Devin Think again because it's, it's expensive. But Mark remembered me, so he gave me the upgrade price to the, to the latest version because now I was on a MacBook Pro. The, the Tinderbox, by the way, was a rewrite, a simplified rewrite of something called Story Space, yes. which way earlier, which was one of the pioneer hypertext writing tools. And a lot of early literary experiments in hypertext used Story Space. And it was a more collaborative tool as well. Very, very innovative tools that 
our lost of history with the web. And story space, space was inspired by stretch text, which we've mentioned several times in free jury spin yep. calls. You can get lost in the Eastgate site. There's just so much there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just I just posted a link to the 1998 essay he wrote, and Story Space is 1987 <coughs> software. <clears throat> now the the history of hypertext is extremely fascinating. But anyway, the so Chris, we're sort of talking through an archaeological dig of these kinds of software, the way you dig through commonplace books. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, and, and, but even most of the stuff I know about it is by having <clears throat> gone back and looked at who was influenced by what from older textual presentations. So that's all, all related. But anyway, I don't know if the agenda is still writing a compendium of tools. Uh, and yeah, the archaeology is interesting, but. I'm really interested in the discussion about what are the classification axes, which I know you're having here. So Matthew's, Matthew's not yeah. on this call, so we should probably hold off talking about that. I, I can represent that a little. Um, cool. uh, Matthew and Bill Anderson and I um, have kind of taken that on as a project, um, uh, developing a series set of dimensions, um, eight, you know, five, six, eight dimensions along which you would uh, profile uh, different tools. And then um, creating a, a massive wiki actually with uh, a person, person page. Um, and then here's the tools I like or dislike. Um, and that links off to tool pages with scores and a spider graph and things like that. So um, let me dig around and I'll, I'll find a link to uh, kind of the massive wiki we're using as a project uh, coordination thing. Um, uh, it's it's really rough and in rough shape, but um, that, that project is ongoing. Um, and briefly before you go on, Pete, um, that's what I was going to talk with you about for the Plex, is that uh, you and I could sort of compose a couple sentences about that project awesome. to put in the Plex. That would be great. Um, I want to inter interview you about OGM, actually. OK. Uh, so uh, where we are with that is um, I've, I've volunteered to write some of the Python stuff that would help us interlink um, person profiles and tool pages and things like that. Uh, you can use regular li wiki links, but then we'll have something that collects the wiki links into here's you know, a list of all of the tools that are mentioned and, and things like that. Um, Matthew, between this week and next week, is working on the, uh, the, the particular dimensions. And I think, I'm not sure if, I, I, th I think he will, he may end up using Massive Wiki uh, to talk through some of that, the, the Massive Wiki channel on Mattermost. Um, but I'll also encourage him to cross post a fellowship of Blink if he's, if he's not started there already. Thank you. That's great. Um, and Marc Antoine, the whole idea of the dimensions, uh, the vectors, dimensions, whatever we want to call them, that we're going to rate or evaluate the different tools on is important. Are, is there a place where we can hold that conversation or, or we're collecting up that information? Uh, you've you're muted. Uh, what I understand is you're having a conversation on the FOTL massive wiki, if I'm not wrong. I did propose a Google Doc where I had my own thinking about axes, and I don't know how much you've referred to that. Uh, this is something I've done partly in collaboration with the CDL people who are also doing the same thing. What was the title of, the, of that doc? Uh, it was. I'll get. I'll give you the top reference. Thank, thank you, because I think it's coming together in my head that that I need to piece these things together still. Yes, <clears throat> CI features and goals. Um, okay, I've got it in my brain. You got it. Good. I'll I'll put the I'll put the handle for others. Thank you. Um, and and the reason I, as I said we have now a new dimensionality proposal from these uh, the super, supermized design folks. 
in the database link that I put just above. So I think we need to do some hard thinking about, we all have ideas about the di important dimension. Now, my document is way too detailed, and I probably need to get a simplified version somewhere. But I do think uh, I do think it's a contribution because I've been thinking about it for a while. Thank you. And I'm willing to go through it because it's probably not as clear as it should be. But I don't know when. I thought today would be the time where we discuss these dimensions. So I don't my, know. This is my guess is Matthew is going to be thinking about it for the next week and have a write up, um, and that might be a good time for him to kind of start syncing up with. Up with your, uh, your thinking, Mark and Tom. And I'm posting the um, Google Doc link to the spreadsheet that Bentley helped create a filter for, which lets you see what a radar diagram might look like using some dimensions. And it, this has not been synchronized at all with your document, Mark and Tom. No way. <clears throat> Um, and Matthew does uh, is aware that um, Bill Seitz has, has stuff, Mark Antoine has stuff, and so it's not like he's ignoring that. But I, th I think just to give him a, a, a week of kind of, you know, let me kind of draft what I'm thinking and then start to call up fair, stuff together. Fair, fair. I needed to do it for myself if, for one thing, and I understand that he had to do the same. <laughs> yeah. The, the, what I hope is we'll take time to align. <clears throat> um, cool. Other thoughts around this particular project? Shall we? Shall we open up the dimensions problem? Um, I think we don't need to open up the dimensions um, okay. right now. Um, and I don't that that whole the whole massive wiki that I I posted is. Uh, if you click all pages thing, um, it's it's all kind of project plan and a little bit of um, starting a little bit of uh, prototyping, um, and it's nothing nothing ready yet. But so I, I don't I don't know that it's worth uh, walking through anything even. Um, I guess on that project plan page, which is, I think is the one that, that uh, I talked about, it's like first, uh, we're in the build phase right now, just start figuring out what we're doing and, and starting starting to work. So then we'll um, start uh, bringing it to larger F, uh, Fellowship of the Link and OGM folks, and then keep going from there. Concentric and cold out. That's awesome, thank you. Um, I have a quick uh, random thing. Uh, um, uh, there's a, a tool called Squintle, um, which uh, is getting towards the end of their their preview early uh, early adopter pricing um, promise. Uh, Sixty dollars for a year, and they uh, early adopter pricing stays for as long as you have the account. So. Um, it's, it's worth looking at, uh, kind of, you know, it's, it's worth looking at and seeing if you're interested. Um, I think if you're not interested in money up front like that, you get on a wait list or um, they'll have a, a free tier in six months or something like that. You're aware of uh, another one in that space is Fermat? Uh, not that. So the, 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 the tool for thoughts for rocks has an event tomorrow, and they're going to format in another one. Oh. Um, um, I didn't realize there was a call tomorrow. <clears throat> I'm somehow off the notifications for that. Because <clears throat> you're muted. There you go. Yeah.
I don't know where my window went. It's the problem with Gintel. Is, I mean, with Jitsi, it's still it's just a tab somewhere. But yeah, I missed the tools for Thought Rocks thing too. Which I'll probably miss for other reasons, alas, but Spatial sounds synthesis. interesting. They always record, mm -hmm. which is nice. So. Yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that. Thank you for the link. Um, so since we're kind of on this topic, which of these rocks do we want to turn over, if any? <clears throat> So it, it seems like there's a lot of tools in this space now. There, you know, Tana mm -hmm. is kind of somehow a near neighbor. <clears throat> uh, there's just a whole lot of like visual whiteboard, zoomable whiteboard, lots of notes on it, maybe links, maybe machine learning and other stuff, I don't know. But the, this the proliferation yeah. of this idea all over the place. Go ahead, Fonsian. Oh, so the, 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 the image is dropped. Um, oh, I'm done. But yeah, I guess. Um, so my particular uh, core interest is in uh, interlinking and inter uh, just networking tools. So uh, going back to dimensions, and I know this is covered in several of these um, sort of like um, uh, dimension charts. Um, I'm personally interested in exploring how even just a, a subset of the tools that we know of already could be made to uh, to interop or to like interlink. Uh, you know, to sort of test the hypothesis that interlinking even a subset uh, could allow th all those communities to compose right. and perhaps actually, you know, push them towards critical mass uh, in opposition perhaps to like some less uh, networking minded uh, first mover. Uh, not to be, rea not to be uh, defensive, but you know, like just to try to test the hypothesis. So I guess I'm personally less interested in like having like a completely thorough uh, mapping of the space, although I believe it's very important. And more about like you know what what could we do? Perhaps discussing what could we do with what we already know. Well, that's my hyper knowledge plan is all about that, <laughs> uh, but it, it's it makes quite a few strong hypotheses that. Uh, what we want, of course, we want deep links. Uh, so that means we both need a way to access objects and different tools for thoughts and to point at sub objects sometimes, maybe like send, you know, phrase in a node, say, things like that. That would be nice. Not vital, but nice. And the other thing is that words. Sorry, sorry, I mean, I, I, just to make sure I got it right. So you would like to have a way to uh, to link with an anchor deep into a node, or yes, which an anchor that's not there already, an a posterior yes. anchor, like like, uh, like annotation. web annotation, web annotation. Yes. Exactly. Perfect, perfect, yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. I mean, my proposal I guess, would be like to reuse the web annotations. Uh, yeah, like, uh, and that, that's fine. And the second thing is those anchors are occurrences of concepts. And the concepts have nothing to do with how the, the anchor text. And we need a many-to-many -many relationship between anchor text and concept identifiers because people don't use words consistently. And it must be possible to say, this word in this thing is used the way that that other word in that other thing is. So we need to have a kind of translation table so between so occurrences and since the guardians of decency and Iran are about to be unemployed, maybe we could turn them into the word police so that everybody, they can enforce that everybody actually means the same thing by the same words. That seems like a good reemployment opportunity. Yes. <clears throat> with, with the same, uh, with, with even less hope of it even ever, ever vaguely applicable. Good point. Good point. <laughs> but yes. So, yes, I mean, this seems like, and, and you have been throwing this, uh, you say hyper knowledge mass is your. Oh, you're thing? just opening the Pandora box there, aren't you? You're opening, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's a conversation. It's, it's a conversation. Really really <laughs> but, 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 but basically, what I'm, uh, what I'm trying to build is what are the pieces needed exactly for that, for interoperability between tools for thoughts or tools in general, so that we can create the interesting links between applications Perfect. and so I, I, as an aside I, I i guess i mean personally also interested in like this sort of like high level mapping of what are the projects that are trying to do this interlinking 
Yes. <laughs> the second map. No, we need. Yes. yes, we need. We 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 need the 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 project of of mappings. Yes, absolutely. The mapping of mappings. Yes. The and and what I'm saying is preconditions is as much deep linking as we can, of course. And what we want is deep backlinks. And, that, and but we can't rely on the anchor text for the meaning. So if we want to link not just text to text, but meaning to meaning, we need to have a kind of very supple relation, you know, many to many relationship between anchor text and meaning. And a way to negotiate meaning to say, I think this means that. No, I think it means that. And a, a kind of meta conversation about meaning. And uh, the, 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 and when you say meta conversation, you're not speaking about a graph, a, a graph anymore, but a recursive hypergraph, because you need to be able to qualify each uh, relationship. So this is what I'm trying to specify, and I know others are doing that. But. Yes, uh, I am also currently trying to do that. Is so, anybody else trying to do this in this call? Well, I'm I'm working with Jack, so right. that's. Jack, you are also doing this. Uh, nice to meet uh, you, Jack, and I think also Peter, by the way. Yes, nice to meet you. Hey, Matthew, likewise. Hey, yeah, this is the first time I've seen you face to face, but I certainly follow you on Twitter and all of your work. Likewise, likewise. And, and so Slotin, if you like... want to talk a little bit about Agora. Uh, yeah, that would be talk about your approach, I'll talk more. I can talk eight for hours about mine, but. Yo, yeah, yeah, no, no. I think we are on the same page there, and like, I think this is maybe the occasion, I mean, at least with the right uh, Freeman and translator layers, where we could all do this for hours because I I have the impression we will be talking about like conversion projects. So, and, and in this framing at this very high level of like, you know, recursive hypergraphs, we probably like all are all talking about the same approach. But yes, uh, so the Agora is also um, a, a project in this space, and uh, I started it. Precisely to do uh, uh, just interlinking integration, I call it. So uh, uh, opportunistic integration, in the sense that, uh, and this is uh, uh, also like a way of saying uh, it is very uh, uh, optimistic when making links and when actually like trying to integrate uh, many different data sources into like a, a relevant but only occasionally cohesive whole. So this means an agora is a device you, you set up and it's like you point it to a number of repositories and it will just consume them all and try to surface uh, all the resources it has identified in, in any semantic context in which they could be relevant. Uh, so to some extent, it's, it's, a, a, it's a sort of like a, a, an integrator plus uh, some very basic search uh, procedures. And uh, yes, uh, and it takes uh, you know all these uh, you know on, um, more uh, nuanced uh, like um, like perhaps uh, sub problems like you know how do you uh, uh, you know uh, manage this many to many uh, relationship between the text and meaning. It just completely uh, like delegates that or like doesn't tackle that by saying same text, same like assume same meaning, and even uh, originally just like that's. Um, uh, does like even less than that in some sense, and you know, uh, like tags you can use uh, like a, you know camel case tags you can use like a, 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 like wiki links, you can have slacks, and all they all map to the same sort of like a node, which will be this fuzzy like entity space. So uh, so essentially, what it tries to do is like put every resource in a, in in many nodes. And each node is like a description of an entity, uh, like a unicode text. And then it serves whatever is right there and in a radius. So it's like a fuzzy discover. Yeah, sense. yeah, yeah. You, you, you're, not, you're not doing semantics, basically. No, you, you, you decided exactly. to punt the question of semantics. Exactly, exactly. With the hypothesis, convenient hypothesis, that uh, if we get enough users, we will have a emergent uh, meaning and emergent conventions. So it has to be non-opinionated there. We may get a dumpster fire instead. Uh, but the, uh, if, anything, if nothing else, it should be fun uh, <laughs> if we get there. Um, and in the sense that, you know, like uh, the, the, the rules, what they also try to offer is a series of 
mechanisms to uh, use the same basic uh, building blocks, the resources, which are like text and links, essentially. It's based on plain text, markdown, for formatting and wiki links. It, it, it adds some directives, it's like a DSL, sort of like a set of languages which can be described with wiki links. So you can use them in any tool. And those are like self-referential. So you can, so the community can use those to hint, to say, for example, like actually when I say this, I mean this, but it's sort of like an optional layer. How, how do you say when you say this, you mean this when you only have the internal links of the text? Like right. if, if I cannot edit the text, how can I add a link? I mean, that's my problem with a lot of markdown based tools. You don't have offline annotations, so you cannot come from the outside and say, I think right. this means this, or I'm inferring this uh, implicit hypothesis there or stuff right. like that. So uh, it, right now, I'm mean, experimenting with like two procedures. I, I don't know whether this is an answer, but it, it is the answer that I drafted, which is like two of the directives uh, that uh, I've been experimenting with are, uh, I call it pull and push, just like uh, to try to use this like very physical uh, sort of like metaphors, which essentially pull will be like transclusion. So that entity over there, take it here. I bring it here because it's relevant in some okay. way. And push, which is remote transclusion in the other direction, which means it's like a pop-up action, which means whatever I write here is it's also relevant there. And, uh, and the hypothesis that, you know, like this is uh, like serve as hints, strong hints that that remote entity is relevant here. And, you know, whenever you have like a symmetry of that, where, you know, like a user saying this is relevant here and this is relevant here, that actually brings the entities together. And then that plus uh, perhaps some definition of the radius, you know, will mean that, you know, if enough people are essentially referencing, cross-referencing, and, and not only that, but uh, transcluding entities, then that could mean that they are the same in some context. Mm. Uh, so, so, so that's, so, yeah. Yeah, so you're trying to do, uh, basically those are, uh, I've been referring late in the latest FGB call to what I'm calling deep backlinks. And mm. I think this describes quite well what you're doing, am I right? Uh, I don't know what deep uh, backlinks are, but that sounds interesting. The, 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 well, deep linking is linking to an anchor with annotation, and what yes. you want is backlinks on that. <laughs> right. Or back deep links, maybe I should say. But right. I yes. think I yes. think deep backlink sounds better. <laughs> right, 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 right. The the um, but but it's still very much on the backlink model in the sense that the referred to entity has to be aware of the protocol to know well this is what's being said about this. Right. Yes, and there needs to be some like uh, receiver essentially uh, on that side. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yes. I mean, um, I mean, maybe I, I, I want to read more on the babbling, so actually, uh, make sure that I got this. But yes, I mean, in, in practice, uh, I'm not sure that the push and pull in the hour actually are uh, enough to get uh, to solve these problems. But they, they're essentially like, I've I, I been trying to like add as few concept as possible over just links, essentially, which is what Marlon right. does. No. And, yeah, and, and, and also with the idea that, of course, the idea is that all of this work, no matter in which tool you, which tool you use. And uh, in particular, I was tackling uh, a, a different problem, so perhaps this is a person that doesn't do this one completely, but it's like the issue of like block references, you know, which are like a present in many tools, and they actually make interrupts sort of hard, a <laughs> priori. Because it depends on like a centralized sort of like registry, right? Yep. Uh, so in this case, essentially, it all uses a local context. So that it can be anonymous in some way. And it, 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 you know, uh, so in, the, in essence, you could push and pull from nodes written, um, uh, you could push and pull blocks written in different tools. So that's the pitch. Right, but, right, uh, right. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 yeah, I think I, I'm. I see a lot in common, but I see a lot that is different. Let me focus on the differences, yeah, though nice. I think there's, there's, there is a lot in common. Deep backlinking is certainly something I want to do, but this is a this links, so to speak, occurrences, right? And 
I'm thinking, how can we think at, how can we do collective intelligence at web scale? And that means any single idea will be in millions, hundreds of millions of documents. So the link tool will, I think, become unusable at that scale. And so I'm interested in if we can identify concepts and deduplicate concepts, then we're able to say, okay, this is this concept in this document. Here are adjacent concepts like distinctions, argument, claims, uh, and, and, and those claims would be each have you know, maybe a thousand documents where they're made, discussed, blah, blah, blah. But if you have some, uh, the point of having semantic identity as opposed to syntactic is to uh, give um, a less uh, overwhelming list of references and also be able to focus on some social aspects. Like it's not important to know that a lot of people think that dogs are nice because a lot of people agree on that it's not contentious uh, whereas the dogs are dangerous is much more contentious and is that way knowing who argues on either side of that is much more interesting than the really uncontentious uncontested notion uh, of for example dogs being quadrupeds like Nobody's got, <laughs> nobody's bothering about that. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, and, and, and so having a kind of, uh, what's the social truth about this? And, and I'm really interested in the, the fractal nature of this. Like this is what I believe about a statement, the statement I believe to be true, false, plausible, maybe interesting, I don't know. <laughs> and that's one, you know, it's not just true, false for me alone. And if I'm in a team, then the team may say, we collectively believe that according to whatever social decision mechanism we have in that team, majority, uh, leadership, whatever, whatever. And then socially, then this is a numbers game. Like what do people believe and why? And more important, why? And, and, and can we get people to go from a commonly held belief to why do we actually believe that <laughs> right, right. And, and expose that and uh, there, very prominently? There, and maybe are there simple entry points to that exercise? <clears throat> so I'm reminded here of Dave Gray's <clears throat> diagnostic card deck for organizations, where he wrote down a whole series of sort of dysfunctions and high functions that organizations have. And he would hand them to a potential client and say, here, sort these into a pile of the ones that you have in your organizations and the pile that don't apply. And it was this like brilliant little thing where, where it would collect down to, oh, these are the things we should be talking about. And here I'm thinking, if we want to figure out people's belief systems, is there something as simple as a, a virtual card deck, like, you know, uh, flip right, uh, slide left. <laughs> Tind the Tinder of uh, cognitive biases. Is, and, is there uh... <laughs> Tinder of, of internet hatred or whatever? Like, like yeah. Um, so, you know, swipe left, swipe right on whether you agree with this particular statement can rapidly get you into some constellations of belief and, and conversation. Uh, interesting. The, 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 certainly the point is to go beyond the swipe right, swipe left into why you believe that. But I agree that having a quick picture of how what you believe is the entry point to the next conversation. Right. So, um... Yes, that seems uh, that seems clearly the ultimate, the ultimate goal we're after here, which is like a greater quality of discourse and you know yes. greater efficient coordination. Uh, yeah, uh, yes. uh, so I think from the point of view of what uh, my project is focusing on is a bit more on the mechanics of integration. Yes, leaving this completely open. But uh, uh, occurrence, uh, uh, occurrence relations rather than concept as pivots, exactly, which is yeah. which is core for me. Yeah. Yes, uh, although I would say that the idea of, of pull and, and push, for example, like when you pull uh, an entity, is that the the entities that are pushing to that one will also be pulled. So essentially, it's bringing it's actually bringing closer, like a, a section of the of the, the hardware graph. Uh, and, and in that sense, you could. Uh, it also has, of course, the, 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 the social aspect, which is with the graph is contributed by uh, by different users. Where like the idea, which is not implemented, is to be able to say, okay, show me, let me browse the graph like I was this user, 
Uh, and that of, uh, of no, no, that's important people. as well. Yes, yeah. uh, that, uh, I'm thinking of uh, every user having one or maybe even many event streams of right. here are things I believe and here are, yes. and, and then using that to have a multi perspective and be able to make cross perspective assertions. Like this user thinks like this one right. on this topic. And so, so, so my sorry. sorry go ahead. Um, I'm going to throw a pragmatic and un impractical <clears throat> real-time, real-world example into this uh, just because it seems really important. But uh, there's a problem here that half of the Republicans running for office in the midterm in the U.S. right now uh, believe that the election was stolen. They're basically election deniers. Oh, or say, or say they believe. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. But, but I'm really interested in it. Is there some sort of way to... Uh, knock them out of the ability to participate in civic discourse if they agree to that statement. So do you agree that the election was stolen could become, in, in my dream world, could become a litmus test for whether or not you get to participate in the state legislature or whatever else, that, 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 denial, that denialism of election and therefore the undermining of the next elections is a reason to say you cannot, in fact, show up to talk in this forum. Because otherwise we're screwed. Like a whole bunch of these people are going to be elected because they're in safe districts, and and our legislative bodies are going to be infected with people who believe this as from the get go, and nobody's taken any kind of draconian measure to make sure that doesn't happen. So I'm kind of proposing a draconian measure based on the conversation we just had about <clears throat> a stream of what people believe. Well, one thing I uh, have been advocating for quite a while is if we're going to go into collective decisions. Uh, we want to qualify uh, belief, not just by number of people who believe it, but by their track record of uh, being aligned with reality, and especially in the predictions. Like there's been all this magnificent work of super forecasters. Yes, I know, I keep repeating it. That's great. Uh, <laughs> I, bet, I bet he's going there. I bet he's going there. But and you are right <laughs> uh, that Locke has done wonderful work making it very uh, very clear how to measure the ability of someone to uh, align with reality even with fuzzy predictions. This, and that's really interesting. This part. is also what the dot connector does at Dalio's Bridgewater. So one of the reasons they rate everybody really openly and kind of, it feels like maybe too transparently and viciously, <clears throat> is that they want to figure out exactly what everybody's track record was. So if, if, if Bob across the table is always annoying but always right, then we should like, get over the annoying parts of how he delivers this message and listen more carefully to what Bob says next time. right? Yeah. And the only way to do that is to track the assertions made over time and then figure out how to, how to rate them. Absolutely fundamental. Yeah. And this, this, this is why the, yeah, the track record matters and being able to... Uh, and, and that's the other reason I'm text, text is what it is, but getting conceptual also is a way to distinguish empty claims from testable claims. Uh, an example we've been working a lot with as a test case in CDL uh, was someone saying, the, the economic cost of the lockdown is greater than the health cost of the pandemic, for example. And this is a perfectly meaningless statement in the sense that you can imagine totally different scenarios with totally different costs of either health or lockdown, economic costs, health costs, blah, blah, blah. And where the person could say, yeah, that's what I said, it's, I think it's too high and, and with totally different scenarios. I mean, if somebody says that, okay, what's your prediction for the economic cost? What's your prediction for the, and ballpark ranges, fine, but and what's your prediction for the uh, cost and what's your conversion factor and what do you actually mean? <laughs> because a test has no, this is an example of a non-testable prediction that you'll find in text. And until you actually try to disambiguate and say, okay, what is the meaning here? You won't know it. And, and, and this is why the, the mapping of language to meaning, which is a specialized activity. I don't think we can ask everybody to do that, but it's definitely a crowdsourceable task 
that can be taught, that can be shared. Uh, I, I wonder, uh, so like, going back to the distributed problem we have, I guess, because, you know, like, uh, for example, like, uh, one one possible situation we're in is that there's enough people in the, say, no taking wiki um, collaboration spaces to actually perform this task, which is, like, socially very meaningful, but they yes. are not coordinated enough, which seems to be, like, uh, the case. Uh, it yes. just doesn't happen. So then I guess my, my question will be, what is the minimum set of actions that we can take so that, say, this distributed um, uh, yes. crowd, right, could actually, for example, like annotate, uh, uh, you know, and, and, and uh, qualify statements done in, you know, public debate settings. Like one of the typical, one of the first um, problems I can see we should solve is how do you refer to a new end in such a way that, you know, you need at least that coordination. Uh, yeah. You need to be able to say, and this is where, like, I sort of feel that having one way, you know, like, it will be like a typical thing, like, what is hashtag for such an event? Uh, so then we get the, the meta problem, how do we make uh, people use hashtags? <laughs> Mate, it's probably like, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. encourage. Encourage, yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, the, the, yeah. the, 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 and, this is, and this is where I'm of the strong opinion that hashtags are not enough because they're too ambiguous. And what I want is the capacity to take this piece of text and say, this is a more formal meaning of this, or this is what I think this mean, this word means in this context, and then crowdsource that and then say, okay, people are disagreeing on this one. So maybe it's an ambiguous word, maybe it's a dog whistle, if there's disagreement on it. And note that, I right. have... But uh, the, the, this is where I, I, I guess I go back to the, uh, for me the minimum uh, coordination action is, I agree to annotate uh, like each event, uh, in such a way so that it's uh, it can be later recovered that I meant that event. So yep. you know, in, 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 the, in my, my approach, and my notes are like all over the place, sort of like because that's what I can do, and also to try to make a point. But it's but, so, but, in the agora, right? <clears throat> part of it is: do you have a centralized place where all that data is kept? So the right, or either, yeah. which which is you know both good and bad. So you well, can, well, we call it federation in our world. Well, I don't think that, that. that, and I'm I'm well aware of, of how that works. But even even in that space, so you've got, and you could look at it the same way you could look at the long tail of hashtags on Instagram. So to reach an audience, an Instagrammer will add 57 hashtags to the end of their post in hopes of casting the widest net possible. And usually it's variations of six different words up and down and left and right. Um, but if you're Instagram, you can say, okay, you know, this post is essentially got at least one hashtag that says Academy Awards as an example. And then it may have seven actors' names and four movie names and something else. But that that massive high-level aggregation can look at that even 20 or 30 people who are doing all those hashtags to aggregate them and then tease that out. Or you've got the same issue, you know, let's say the Super Bowl is on, you know, in February. You'll have a million people on Twitter talking about it typically with no hashtags saying that was a good play or a bad play and the only way to recontextualize it is to find the date and time stamps that relate to a larger world map but twitter ostensibly could do that and add an invisible an invisible hashtag to that metadata to indicate there's a high likelihood that this thing is about that but it's you have to do it from the top down to be able to recreate those contexts in reverse and then add a probability score of how likely it was that they actually were about that particular topic, given who the person is and their past history. So you can do it with some ergodic theory probably and actually tie those things back. So it's doable, but it's it requires having some central or even federated repository of data that you can access to reverse engineer it. Right. And it, it shocks me that we, we don't do that. I mean, Instagram would be a much nicer place to visit 
if I didn't have to see 500 hashtags on everything, influencer why posts. Um, yeah, makes sense. So, so, so just quickly, uh, the the, uh, the idea behind the social uh, take we are taking uh, or the period we did nowadays that the community that agrees to be in one hour uh, sort of is agreeing to cross link promiscuously to some extent in the sense that you know if I link something like an entity is a link, then that sort of gives. Uh, he's the to the agora that that same thing could be linked in the same way, even if it's not linked elsewhere. So to some extent, it's like a some forceful community linking. So you know, like to some extent, this goes the direction of uh, like converge and like actually be able to have this higher level like uh, uh, groups of hashtags or of links and higher level like uh, you know semantic linking happen like consensually by a community, right? So, the yeah my, my uh, concern is uh whether we're speaking about real hashtags or computed hashtags we're still at risk of confusion and it's not just the ambiguity it's um it's really the what do you mean by that and and being able to ask that question and that question being made kind of salient to everybody so everybody can say no no i mean this one i mean that one and, 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 and creating the, the distinction when it's meaningful, when it's important, uh, so that everybody can reuse that distinction and reuse the ambiguity. And if, uh, and if we go back to political discourse, when somebody uses a, a dog whistle, ask, do you mean that? And so the politician kind of has to say, well, no, not really, <laughs> which well, is probably a lie. The problem is no one's feet are actually held to the fire you exactly. can say it was that a dog whistle, and they'll deny it. Yep. And in fact, it was. And but, but and it can be shown that a lot of people understood it this way. Well, this which is already an which is already an interesting thing. So they'll have to deny it a bit more strongly. A lot of people said, "I understood this. I, I read this as a dog whistle." <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's this last week's L.A. City Council brouhaha mm. with multiple people either resigning or being asked to resign is, you know, I'm not aware of this do. latest, you know, Mer so I, a, a group of ostensibly diverse city council members were having a conversation roughly a year ago and used a few kind of racial code words that exist within the Latino community and a, an audio tape was released and it became a big enough thing that Joe Biden weighed in and said, yes, you should resign from, you know, the president of the city council. Um, and this is in a very left leaning area with generally progressive people. And but likely, still they're and likely being, next mayor, I think, too. Yeah, like, they like, were being, you know, broadly racist in, in their statements. Um, and it becomes a a thing that they would only say that, or they said it because it was a quiet, closed group that they didn't expect it would get out. So there's always that. And the, right now, I think that's one of the bigger issues with most of the Republican Party is a, a do as I do, or do as I say, not as I do. So they're all pushing out messages and then doing the polar opposite. And, and and that becomes even a harder thing to fight against because even if you say something and you clarify it and you're super clear, the fact that you can go do something totally different and you're judged by, uh, you're that, judged that, by words, but then your actions are wholly different is a whole other level of problem. That, that, that is absolutely true. The, uh, I've been having a lot of argument with... Uh, people in who are deeper than I am in the DAO and smart contract space. And I'm totally, I mean, I think the DAO crowd is fantastic, but I'm really not comfortable with smart contracts. I think they are just opportunities for bugs and uh, cascade effects. But that said, the good thing about smart contracts is enforced accountability. It's having, uh, forcing people to act according to what they say they will do. Uh, and there is something there. 
despite my discomfort, I may need to, to, to the question of how align are words and actions when um, words are legal and have legal value. Small side note, in the Free Jury's Brain calls some months ago, David Bauville, an occasional member, walked us through Lexon, <clears throat> which is sort of a language for smart contracts that's meant to be a, a human readable and machine readable and more precise language than the normal garbage you find in contracts. And it was super interesting. You could sort of, you could sort of see something important coming together in that space. That, that last intervention was very much influenced by David Bauville. <laughs> Go ahead, Sansin. Uh, no, no, I, I, was, I want to do a very clarity on the name. It's Lexon. Ah, oh, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, right, makes sense. Uh, so I guess, well, this is a very complicated topic. I think, uh, of course, like, um, we went a bit in the direction of how to fix the political system, which I think we should do, by the way. But it does seem like uh, it, it, it carries a lot of, like, uh, extra complexity. Uh, I wonder if we could perhaps think together about what a prototype will look like that let's say a community, uh, you know, do something in concrete, like uh, better when it comes to pushing back against, like, you know, just complete falsehoods or, or this, like, uh, yeah. yeah the, the, I have a prototype for kind of the bigger vision, not a prototype, sorry. I have a plan for a prototype. I'm working on the data model a lot, and I've been working on it forever. And my God, it's slow, but it's progressing. Um, the, the, but I have a roadmap for uh, what I call hyperknowledge, which is the unifying thing. But it's true that we could have useful things shorter run for the... Uh, The political side of this and that's totally a good question to ask i'll have to think hard about what's yes. a good subset well even uh, even on the political side i would uh, i think something that could help would be watching the ability for people to micro target and make their actions and words not match so it's very easy for Donald Trump to micro-target people on Facebook who are anti-Semitic because you can do a search and then send them specific mail. And if that's the one issue on which they're going to vote and that becomes the majority of their decision, how do you then, you know, and it, essentially it's a hot mic moment, but it's a hot mic moment no one is going to say anything about because you know, it's a quiet, like, oh, I need to be signaled to that this is the case. And the way Donald Trump speaks, it's a very, you know, you can look at, you know, old things like techno babble or double speak or politico speak as examples. He's saying things, but there's not enough semantic meaning in any of the things he's saying because they're not full sentences that literally anybody who's hearing it can draw the perspective of agreement that matches with their particular polarization. Yep. So early on, it caught a lot of people both in the center right, the center, and even some on the left, oh, I could be for Donald Trump because I hear him saying these things. But at the end of the day, none of the things he was saying actually meant anything because of the way he speaks. And it's a, in his case, it's a very linguistic, difficult thing to pull out. So then you can only act on, and the thing shifted because his actions then became totally apparent what his policies were. And then he lost that fuzzy center left center and a lot of the center right because it was 